Be 100% real with me right now. Avatar is an anime, right? You'd think so, but it really shouldn't be, and it's not. It's a Western animated Nickelodeon series that was inspired and influenced by anime. The writers wear their nerd card on their chest. They're so proud. In every interview, they'll say that it was inspired by anime. I don't think that we should forget about that detail. Avatar is an homage, a love letter to Japanese anime, but we were always conscious that we weren't trying to pass it off as a counterfeit. We all know that Avatar is a show that got people into anime. It made people take anime a little bit more seriously. The writers themselves calling Avatar a love letter to anime I think just makes the show even better, honestly. Avatar doesn't need the label as anime to be awesome, it just is, and you can see the influence throughout the series. So with the live action coming out, like, I love this series. Do you see that poster? Isn't that sick? Looking at this poster the other day and was suddenly struck with the question. It feels like anime, but like, what anime? How is it a love letter like what the writers say? And what about the anime influence could possibly be lost with it becoming a live action, you know? So you know what I did to answer these questions? I googled it. So let's find out. Let's talk about the anime that influenced Avatar The Last Airbender. I honestly was just really bored in the middle of the night and looked this up on my own and then while I was looking it up I was like wait I should I should talk about this in a video. So this is that and what I found was that anime has been an influence since the beginning in the character designs. As an anime watcher, expressive faces and exaggerated action seems pretty typical for us to see in the world of western animation. There is one show that I'd say is the biggest influence to Avatar in its entirety, and that show is one of my favorites. Cooly Cooly. They literally said that before they could start production, every person working on it had to buy and watch Fooly Cooly. It was so that they could get a feel of the characters and especially how they move. The iconic opening in every episode of Avatar saying Aang can save the world? Fooly Cooly! Just the movement, the character animation. Avatar has so much physical comedy that yeah, this was a great reference to bring to these animators. Aang's character design was heavily influenced by Naota. Even the Avatar state to the Pirate King in this show. Yeah, it's called the Pirate King, you One Piece stands. As a huge Avatar stan and Fooly Cooly girly, this... I don't know, this fact was so awesome and so fulfilling to me. I've never felt so proud, especially with how weird Fooly Cooly is to Avatar. It's a coming of age show, it's chaotic, has robots, everyone should watch it, that's all I'm gonna say. Studio Gynex was actually brought up by the writers all the time in all the interviews that I found. Okay, guessing game time. I want you to look at Boomy and think with all the anime knowledge that you have, what popular show is his character design based off of? Wrong, it's an Ava. Yeah. Hey by the panda spirit that was destroying a town was also inspired by one of the angels from Evangelion. More on his concept later. Also another series, the iconic Cowboy Bebop was a huge reference and inspiration for a lot of the characters in the show. In the first developmental stages of Avatar, Konetsuko, the writer, actually looked at Bebop and was inspired to draw his own traveling companion group. We got a little monkey with an arrow on its forehead, a dude holding a staff, and a big polar bear dog hybrid, which soon became to what we'd know as Momo, Aang, and Appa. But still enjoying this idea of a traveling crew, this inspired Jet and the Freedom Fighters. Most specifically, Jet's character was made with Spike Spiegel in mind, which makes so much more sense for Jet's character in general. And then even the twig that's always in Jet's mouth is a call to Spike always having a cig in his mouth. In the comics, they have Aang wear a wig and it's Spike's hair, like look at that, come on. The writers were huge Shinichiro Watanabe fans. He's the guy that made Bebop and Samurai Champloo. They said that he cherishes Watanabe's fight scenes, specifically the one between Spike and the drug smuggler in Asteroid Blues, as well as the duel between Mugen and Sarah who holds a staff while she fights, much like our boy Aang. The main girl in Samurai Champloo also has a pet flying squirrel named Momo. Coincidence? 
I think not. Hi, Ki. If you haven't seen Bebop or Samurai Champloo, you should definitely go watch them. They are so good. And the soundtrack for both of them is dope. Like, go watch it. Go listen to it. Another fun fact is that because in Bebop, Spike and his gang always ran into reoccurring characters, the old men in the show, Antonio, Carlos, and Jobim, that inspired the reoccurring appearance of the Cabbage Man. Because of anime, we wouldn't have the man screaming, my cabbages. My cabbages. My cabbages. My cabbages! My cabbages! My cab- Oh, forget it! Avatar without the Cabbage Man would honestly just be really sad. And you know what else would be really sad? Browsing the internet unprotected. Which is why I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. NordVPN keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all of the information that's sent between your devices and the internet. And thing is, NordVPN is much more than just a VPN. They just launched their brand new threat protection, which informs you about any apps that could make your info vulnerable. They also use a mesh net, and it's just a way to safely access your other devices no matter where in the world they are. With MeshNet, you can safely reach files from your home, on your PC, on your laptop, phone, or tablet with just a few clicks and even play your PC games over LAN. Of course, as a film and TV girly myself, my favorite aspect about NordVPN is that I get to unblock movies that are in other countries that I can't access. Like if you didn't know, Ghibli movies aren't available in American Netflix, but they are in other countries, so thank you NordVPN. Not to mention that NordVPN also keeps me safe from phishing, password attacks, and lets me get away with getting the anime to show in these videos. If you're interested in learning more about it, go to the link in the description or go to nordvpn.com slash You can get a two year plus four month plan for free. Did you hear me free? Honestly, why not just try it out? It's risk free and they also have a 30 day money back guarantee. It also also just really helps my channel out if you click the link. Big thank you to NordVPN and let's get back to the video. Okay, so outside of having small references and getting inspiration with character designs from anime isn't something unique to Avatar The Last Airbender. A lot of Western animated shows have done that. But I think Avatar sets itself apart from the others because you can really show and feel that it has an understanding to anime. You feel the love in the medium as it showcases it in little ways throughout the story. Highlighting that a cartoon meant for young kids to watch on Nickelodeon didn't mean that it had to hold back from themes of heartbreak, terror, war, heavier storytelling, all while still having that comedy and light air to the show. Side thing, our boy Appa was inspired by the cat bus from My Neighbor Totoro and Momo was mostly also by Totoro himself. The idea of the spirit world and Spirited Away are just other small things that they really took inspiration from Ghibli, but a huge thing that the writers mention all the time is how Hayao Miyazaki is a huge inspiration to them. And especially, I think, when you look at the themes of Avatar and the story beats that was really, really pulled from Ghibli, you can feel how much of an inspiration anime really is to Avatar. Princess Mononoke inspired the idea of the absence of villains in the sense that there are only people with competing interests, a perspective that he wanted to take into Western animation. Anti-war is a huge theme in Miyazaki movies, and now Aang being a boy who's trying to stop a war, showcasing in its writing what war does to the people and the environment around it. These themes can especially be seen in the Winter Solstice episode. Hey, bye. Remember I said I'd bring him up again? This character is a perfect demonstration of Miyazaki's films having themes on anti-war nature, villains that you try to understand. Heibai is a forest spirit that's attacking a village and watching it, you're like, ooh, Aang is about to have a fight with a monster. But then you find out that Heibai isn't a monster at all. It's a spirit that's mad and heartbroken that its home, the forest, had been burned down by the Fire Nation. We get a great example of just Aang's character too in this show, who instead of choosing to fight the spirit, decided to understand it and give it hope, saying that 
the forest can return to what it once was again. So they took the design of an Ava and put it with the themes of Princess Mononoke. The Legend of Korra definitely delves more into the spirit world and understanding it, which has so many nods to Spirited Away. And then the Avatar Juan arc is also like a shot for shot recreation of Princess Mononoke from the spirits taking a bath to the literal creature that Avatar Juan rides. It's all there and it's awesome. But that's all that I found for this video. I'm sure that there's plenty more parallels and examples and maybe even more interviews that can be found about all the inspiration from anime that the writers took. I really hope that you found this video interesting. I know that this video isn't really as profound as my typical video essays are, but I don't know. I was doing the research and was like, maybe I should hit record. But overall, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe, all of it, none of it. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, join the Discord, and let me know what you think of the live action avatar. I am very curious. Don't ruin my babies. It's not like I care anything.